Eagle Peak Middle School. We're a STEM school, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So we have 500 kids who are learning about how to solve problems in the world using technology, etc. So maybe we should bring them in here tonight as well. We've got a great group of kids. Been a hard week. Um, uh, memorializing and thinking about the anniversary of fires. And for the kids, I will tell you one of the best therapies is seeing their homes being rebuilt. Uh, that is what has lifted up a lot of them who have a really hard go in a lot of cases. So the work that's being done is awesome. And when I ask a kid, how you doing? And they say, you know what? We're, we're building. We're, we're bringing in a house. We're rebuilding. And it's just been awesome to see that. Okay, so at this point, just a quick reminder, the bathrooms are off to the right if you need to use a restroom, and we're going to get going. And speaking of rebuilding, at this, uh, that's the theme, of course, of the evening, and I'd like to introduce Congressman Jared Huffman. Uh, he is a dynamo, he's been a driving force behind uh, 
efforts along with Jim Wood to get the state funding that's part of making this project move forward. And I want to welcome him to the microphone.
and all their staff. What the heck? Well, what the heck is a big deal. Um, the adventure that we're going through and as we go into the future. But I want to tell you, it is the support of all our electeds and county staff and their work, or we wouldn't be where we are today. And because of their engagement and dedicated work, it's giving us a much brighter future as we go on this long, long road of recovery. Um, a special thank you uh, has to be said um, to both our state and federal representatives, because we couldn't have done it just as a county. And I want to say thank you, thank you. And I'd like to have a round of applause, because they have worked very hard.
many of this happened. And, uh, and also to Tampa as our general manager who stepped in and took over um, after our general manager, Bill Kohler, tragically died. And he was, uh, it happened when he was off on a vacation in Mexico. And before that, Mexico, that vacation, he um, did a mad rush uh, around to lay out um, where the lines needed to go and the, uh, specifically the uh, um, route for looping the lines uh, for more reliable flow and pressure under extreme conditions. And uh, Tamara picked up that ball and ran with it and uh, did a job that, uh, and together with Senator McGuire and, and the others, um, that I don't think Bill really believed could happen, but it, it did happen. And I'm also very grateful that um, the county with um, my old pal, Howard DeShield, will be uh, managing the project, which is um, a huge help to the district because it's, it's a big project that would be hard for the district to handle. And so I'm very grateful for that. All right, we're going to move on to agenda item three, deep dive into Redwood Valley Water District Improvement Project and Chief Building Official Mike Oliphant. Thank you, Mike.
the construction of your single family president, uh, residence, there is going to be no delay in the inspection process. The inspection process will go as it has normally. You go through the whole process, you call us, we're out there the next day to facilitate that inspection for you. However, at time of final inspection, which is the certificate of occupancy and the approval to move into your residence, if the water district improvement project has not yet been completed, and you're on a parcel where you have inadequate water supply, that is an undersized supply line from a meter main, uh, you will be able to use an alternative method, which is a separate supply tank and a booster pump. Now, I'm sure all of us have seen the black poly plastic tanks that people use on the private properties for uh, water supply, portable water supply of the wells. And those are rather large. This tank for the fire suppression system can be as low as 320 gallons. So that's rather small. The reason it's so small is because in a fire suppression system, only one sprinkler head goes off at a time. Now, when you submit these plans to the building department, you're going to hire a C16 state licensed contractor who will size and calculate your fire suppression system. They are the ones who will calculate if you have the adequate supply for your water or not. And uh, so, for instance, if, if there is typically right now a 5 8 or a 3 quarter inch water supply to your home, which is most likely what you have, and you'll need a 1 inch, then they're going to size that on the plan. And at time of final, if the project is completed and you don't have that 1 inch, you can simply put in that supply tank the booster pump, get that online, and it can be tested, and you can go through your final inspection and certificate of occupancy that way. This alternative tank and pump method is very common on parcels who have independent wells. And uh, oftentimes the independent wells don't have adequate supply, so they pump into a tank, and they always have the supply ready for the fire suppression system. And they're oftentimes shared with the whole water system. Um, I want to mention that there are some exemptions. I stated that every residence in California must have a fire suppression system. And that's written into Title 24 of California state law. In another section, Title 25 of California state law regulates manufactured homes. Now, manufactured homes at this time are exempt from the fire sprinkler requirements. So, uh, we've all seen manufactured homes going in, and they go in rather fast. They are exempt from that fire sprinkler requirement. There's another class of homes, and that is the limited density owner built rural dwelling ordinance, and that is also out of California Title 25 state law. Here in Mendocino, we call it Class K, and I think we've all heard about that. That is another method. If you qualify for Class K, you are exempt from sprinklers if you so choose. However, many people are choosing to go with the sprinkler system for many reasons. Basically, uh, number one, they're proven to save lives. Fire sprinklers do that, and uh, fire professionals across the board will tell you these are vital, very, very important. But I wanted to be sure that you knew of your options that were available to you so you can make your own decision as homeowners. Um, and that concludes my topics for discussion. I will be available afterwards for any questions. Uh, I'm available every day of the week. Uh, it's easy to contact us. We also have a team of building inspectors who are always available for any questions you may have. You can come down to the planning and building department, you can email, you can call us, or we're always there to help you out. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here tonight.
Thank you. So, um, do we have questions from um, any of you that um, are specific to what we've discussed tonight? Yeah, I'm Katrina Fry, and I'm very happy for my fellow residents on Tomkai in the Fisher Lake Loop, but it looks like the entire rest of Tomkai Road is left out of this improvement. Am I looking at the map properly? My understanding is there's already a large enough line in Tomkai Road. So they're only upsizing line. The engineers here that did the preliminary, but there's already a large enough line in Tomkai Road. So that just the services need to be upsized to the new homes that are built. Is that right, Chris? Yes, the engineer is saying that's right. So you're, you're saying that people who are on the actual Fisher Lake will have adequate pressure to Correct. rebuild? Correct. They may need, you know, there's a six inch main line, and then there's, as Mr. Alfon was just explaining, in the old days, maybe a half inch, three quarter inch service. That might have to be upgraded to one inch, but that's just the stub that comes off and goes to the lot. The project is only going to upgrade the stub to the property line, and it's the property owner's responsibility to put a larger line to their rebuild. But that would have been the case in any circumstance. The district only maintains to the, the lot. Thank you. Anyone else? Here we go. Uh, so we're in the process of rebuilding now, and we're hoping that we'll be in our house by December, Christmas, we're hoping. Um, uh, the proposed line, new upgrade, is going to, a six inch line is going to go right between our property and our neighbor's property. But in order for us to get approval for us to rebuild, we had to come up with an alternate source of, of water for our sprinkler system. So the question to me is, at some point in time, this system will be finished, and we'll be, our house will be 50 feet away from a new six inch line, which means that we're gonna to have to redo all of our plumbing to tie into that six inch line, right? And the question is, we've already spent a couple thousand dollars having our, uh, our new system, our, our sprinkler system designed, and if we go to this new system, are we gonna to have to repay or have to have somebody redesign a sprinkler system for us so that it ties into our house. That's a very good and important question. So you have a couple of choices. You can stay with the booster pump and the tank. Okay. And on your plan that was designed by your fire sprinkler contractor, that C16, that tank booster tank, uh, booster pump was an alternative method. And you'll see on the one line diagram how that ties into your, into a main supply line with a, a check valve on it. And so the answer is you do not need to redo the, the whole system. You are merely going to disconnect the tank, the booster pump, and the water district's new one inch supply, let's just call it a one inch supply, is going to tap right into that supply line before that check valve. You're going to take the tank and pump and sell it on Craigslist. Okay? So on your C16 plan, it shows that your sizing of that line, probably on page one. So, okay, okay. Did I answer your question? No. Okay. The question is, does she have to pay again? Remove the booster pump to bring in a new line for the meter. Right. Okay, 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 great. So the, the answer is yes, you'll need a simple over the counter water line permit. It'll be, uh, the, right now, the cost of that permit right now is $83. And what an inspector does, they go out, they, they determine the depth of the trench, they look at the size and type of material used for that water line, and they look at all the joints to make sure there are no leaks. So it can be under pressure of the, the new line, all connected, and that 
that's it. There's also a tracer wire that goes along with that PVC line. So it's one inspection, it's an over-the-counter plumbing permit, and so. That's right. You, absolutely. So, so they could leave the existing system as it is. That's right. Thank you. And remember, it's going to be a while down the road. Anyone else? All right. Hello. I've had some conversations with county people. And I, I, one of the things that I'm aware of is that there's a moratorium for hookups of any new residential hookups, I believe, here in Red Valley. And I got some additional maps, and on area map B, it shows a new line running down Road L, and there's like a dozen homes along there. Those homes won't be able to connect because of the moratorium. Is that not correct? That's a, that is an excellent point, and thank you for bringing that up because we have had questions regarding the existing service connection moratorium in the district. This project does not end the service connection moratorium for the district, and it does not facilitate additional connections to the system. So even in those areas where a new loop will be put in for the pressure and system purposes, that doesn't necessarily facilitate additional connections to that section of the line. But something Tamara might not know, I had a call from a resident from Conor Odell, and he presently has a hookup that he has to take off of the road above, and he has an easement through his neighbor, so he already has a hookup. So his question was, could he get the new tap in from the new line? The answer is yes, but they already have to have a hookup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, another quick point. I know in my neighborhood there are a number of manufactured homes, and I understand they don't have a, um, a sprinkler requirement. And there are a number of existing homes that didn't burn down. They don't have a sprinkler requirement. So I think in my area, I don't know if there was an assessment done to determine. I, I have a large line going down, the lateral is going down, and my hookups is on a one each line. And so I would be interested in knowing what assessment was done in my area to determine that this was necessary, because it, it is going to impact me in a negative way. The engineer that put out the conceptual plans was looking at a resilient system that was looped, had multiple ways to serve the area, and to come up to all modern standards. You're right, some of the existing services were adequate or are adequate. But in the totality of this four miles we're reworking, it's, it's, um, that is the concept, and again, it's just the concept. As I said, we still have to work out the details, but it improves the overall system and the overall delivery pressure and flow. So you're right, it might not be necessary for everybody there, but it's going to be better for the totality. I would also just add that looping is also going to help improve water quality. So you have some of these areas where you've got dead in lines and that will increase the flow in those dead in lines and it will reduce the need to flush those and it will improve the water quality in those blocks. I understand your theory on your pressure tank and boost pump. One of the first things that left us on Road L the fire was power. So when the power burn goes, what makes the boost pump work? So uh, there are no requirements for an emergency backup generator system built into California state law in the building codes. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a solution that maybe someday we'll see that uh, emergency system kicks in with 90 seconds uh, on some, we have these on some other emergency situations, but that is not a requirement right now. That doesn't mean you could put I know a what generator it means. system in there on your own. I know what it means, but it does also mean that I'll spend money to put in a system that is not fails, that will fail 
immediately after a fire. So I spent money to spit on a fire. Right. So that's an argument for this district improvement that has you with a district pressure that is um, there and you don't have to rely on the tanks. Well, that's the 2020. And, and it's at the end of 2020, I'll, I'll admit it's going to take some time. But and I still have to buy the boost pump and tank. Thank you. I would like to add that uh, we need to remember the purpose of fire sprinklers, and that is to protect the inhabitants of the house and give them an adequate time to exit the house. And it, it would, I guess, it, when they developed these codes, it was their intent that by the time the power did go out, hopefully the uh, people in the house would have had adequate time to exit. Sprinkler systems are not to put the fire out, it's to give you time no, to not. leave the just house. To protect, That's just to protect the people in the house, to give them time to get out. We have a wildland interface uh, requirements to protect the outside of the structure. Now that is to slow the fire down yeah. and protect the structure. Thank you. Um, my question is, because of this fire that we did not ask for, it didn't happen. There is money 
at the Community Foundation to assist the fire survivors. Along with that, with Supervisor Brown, uh, Brown's good work, we have accessed over $200,000 from Golden State Finance Corporation, which is part of the Rural Counties Association. And that, again, is to specifically help the homeowners. So there are ways to access that money that can help you with your rebuilding for those dollars that you may need that are in addition. And I, I want to say this once again. You know, when we were doing all the community meetings, what you heard from us is that Mendocino County is here. We're here to help you. We were here before the fires, here during the fires, and here after the fires. And I think that's evidenced not only by our supervisors, but certainly by our state and federal representatives. So if you have specific financial questions, I would ask you to meet us after the meeting, and we can talk about Golden State Finance and the Community Foundation and any other funding that we could access. Supervisor Brown, would you like to add anything? Well, I just want to add, if you did lose a home, North Coast Opportunities is handling that money for the Golden State Finance Authority. That's through our Rural Counties Association that we belong to. And each individual can go in and work with their representative at North Coast Opportunities. Okay, you're, you're saying it's not working. So I need your name. I'm saying that I have done that many times, and I don't get okay. help every time. Well, I want you, I, it's okay. She's, she's saying she doesn't get help every time. I want you to write down your, your name and number for me, and we're, we're going to talk. And I'll, and I'll walk you into North Coast Opportunities. Well, I've been there. Okay. I've been there many times. All right. But really. Okay. Bring 
that up because don't, let's not uh, lose sight that that is also still going on. And so, so please do stay engaged. Let us know if you have other ideas that haven't been considered. We, we are open to that. We are a public agency and we'd be happy to talk with you about those options. Thank you for your comments, sir. And, um, and we'll also look at some number one. So number one, understand the frustration. I also understand that the frustration has been here for quite some time. So what we're focused on is first things first. Understand that some may think this is an arbitrary code and we're going to have to be able to comply with it. So because we have to comply with it, we should not saddle you with the cost, uh, which is why we fought to ensure that we have 100% of this project covered. But it's not going to impact your rate base. Meaning you're not going to have to pay more. Number one, as a woman just said, and I appreciate that, no one asked for this file. This is the worst thing that could have happened in this county. And now, we're looking at saddle, or we're going to be saddled with costs. So, number one, we want to be able to deliver and get this rebuilt. Number two, you have our commitment. We have to work with the district and all other districts in a holistic approach when it comes to water allocation. As you all know, and we know, this has been a long time, a long time coming and a long time challenge. So uh, we are committed to be able to uh, talk about how to get your number served, if that's okay with you, and then follow up. And we are in constant communication with the board and Tamara as well as the county. So what do you mean? No, I, I would just say that because we're dealing with disaster funds and funding to that, it is the, it is to get us back to a point where you where these where you folks can rebuild. Um, we recognize, we do recognize that there there is the need for additional water here, but we can't use those federal resources or state resources to go after that at this point. Doesn't mean we can't help you in the future and and in your water district in the future, but we can't use the federal disaster funds to do what you're asking us to do. So. Um, as far as the fire, the, the, the sprinkler code, that, you know, that, that predates, that predates us. I mean, that's been on the books for a long, long time. And, and the important thing is it's there to save people's lives. It's not there to save your house, unfortunately. But, um, but you know, we'll, we're doing the best we can and, and we'll continue to work on, on your behalf. Sir. Um, all of that being said, um, quite a high pollution that we have here at the county. All that being said, I believe the, um, Water for Redwood Valley comes from the dam, right? From that's that's a primary, but not I mean the lake, Lake Mendocino. Is that correct? We need to find the drink. You can use one. Redwood Valley receives irrigation water from the lake, and there's some water that's treated from the lake and put into the system, and they also get groundwater that's pumped up from the Um, and I think there has been some discussion in the past about increasing the volume, the capacity of Lake Mendocino, which would, should, I would think, give us more availability to water, which could help lift the moratorium. Am I thinking right on that? Is that something that could happen? I know this is separate from what we're talking this, about. This is definitely scope creep for this meeting, but in a very quick summary, Yes, yes, yes. We want to increase the size of the museum and raise the dam. And unfortunately, Congressman Huffman isn't here, but he was successful in getting the raising of Coyote Valley Dam onto an Army Corps of Engineers list of projects for future consideration. So between that and his forecast and foreign reservoir operations and forecast act uh, and better managing the water in Lake Mendocino, that will definitely help to provide a more reliable supply for Redwood Valley. Thank you. And it's the Mendocino County Inland Water and Power Commission that's working on that. And they're meeting tonight, but I missed the meeting because I'm here. So that's a group that meets the second Thursday of every month, 6 o'clock, and meets in the conference room behind the City Council Chamber. Hello, I'm Margaret Cole, and I live on Monterey Road, uh, and this is where I, we have a problem with the water 
Illinois going down Monterey Road. Uh, we have always had a drainage problem because we have a great vineyard behind us on the hill at the bottom of the hill. So water drainage has always been a problem. Uh, if that goes through this water thing, uh, it will affect our privacy, our drainage for land, uh, and I don't feel that it's necessary to open up Monterey Road. Sure. So, as I said, the engineers are going to be looking at these proposed new loops. Um, there's a lot more research that has to happen. I believe Monterey Road the southern part, there's a public utilities easement already there, it's just not occupied. The northern part, there is not one, I don't believe. So we would have to negotiate with the owners, we would have to talk to you about um, impacts and those sorts of things. We might even have to change the location, as I said, those maps were a conceptual plan. And it's subject to details, so we'll work on details. But uh, the goal is to try to loop those dead end lines and connect them in Monterey is one of those connections. Thank you. Um, um, this water district, you're getting water from Ukiah, is that right? It's connected to the River Valley Water District? Some, yes. Okay. Is that going to mean there is going to be availability for more water hookups? Not currently. No? Okay, now they're planning to put a water line right through my property, and they're not going to let me get a hookup because I'm not on the district now. Well, I, I would just say if you do not have a current water service connection on your property, this project will not facilitate you getting one due to the service connection moratorium on the district. Even though they're running right through my property? Correct. No new connections are permitted. Uh, that, it's unfortunate, it's a state mandate through the Division of Drinking Water. And how are you going to get my permission to open that my property? Money. I, I guess you can say no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like and then you'll, we would either not have the loop or we would find a willing owner and then we could go around another way. I'll make you a deal. Give me a hook up. You can look at Sure, it's a Yeah, this is still full of vodka, so good. All right, thank you. That's water. 
I think. Um, yes, I will stay. Uh, as I'm speaking to people weekly, several, this has been a, uh, regarding this new water project, this has been kind of a uh, popular question. If you are a, question for you both, if you are an existing Red River Valley Water District customer and the main line has been upgraded adjacent to your property, are you required to pay for a lateral to upgrade if yours isn't already one inch or above to your property? Are you required to do that like you would a sewer or something like that? If your single family residence requires a fire sprinkler, you are required to have that one inch lateral from the meter on the customer side to the home to provide the pressure based on the state code. And what if you've already built and you've already uh, done what you need to do the alternative way? Do you still need to upgrade your lateral? If the existing tank and booster system lateral is not, uh, if you want me to do one to answer this, Mike, I was yeah. just going to say, if it doesn't coincide with where the lateral would need to be located, then yes. So potentially in, in the planning for the location of your booster pump and tank for fire protection prior to you connecting to the system, it isn't designed in a way that you could use that similar setup with maybe a shutoff valve or a short connection with the existing system, then, then no, you would have to, again, pay for the lateral to connect to let, the main. Let me rephrase it. If you have already got your permit, your C-16 contractor approved your hydronics and all your calculations, and you have exactly. the alternative system, and your house is built, and you are final, and you have a certificate of occupancy. Do you, I'm not much of a senior, so I don't know uh, Do you still have to upgrade the lateral if you're already set, done, and good, and final? No, you do not. And is it? You have the option to keep that tank and booster pump. That can be a permanent option for you okay. if you so choose. Okay, perfect. Will that be on the River Valley Water District agenda as an item for the board to discuss and approve? Something to think about. Use the microphone. Yeah, so you have the option. You, if you want to choose and get off that booster pump and tank, you can. If you want to, as your C16 contractor has calped out that size tank and pump and line, uh, it's, it's, it can be permanent. Okay, so that meets the California Building Code fire sprinkler requirement. Okay, thank you. Okay, this might be redundant, but I know that um, Dick asked about tapping into that line that was going through his property, but um, he failed to mention that he did build a new house because his house burned down. So if he's already got water, and it's already good, can he choose to, to tap into it because he is a, a victim of the fire? Do you have an existing water service connection, a, a district meter and district water being served to your property? Yeah, the irrigation water, not domestic. I'm, I'm talking about You've got water. irrigation, not domestic. Okay, could you speak up? I, I, I'm not sure what the specifics the are. The question was about Dick's house. He was asking about tapping into I'm so sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he was saying yes. yes. because wine is going through the property, you couldn't tap in, but he is an environment. If, if you don't have an existing water service connection, you won't be able to add them. Even if you're a fire victim, unfortunately, the, the stipulated judgment is very clear, and the Division of Drinking Water has been very clear. We cannot add any new connections. Okay, just kind of a real fast question. How about fire items? Are there any requirements for that? That is a safety issue with some in, in a lot of locations. Well, the um, designer that we're going to hire, that was one of the things on the punch list. And that is one, I understand they only have hydrants in the system where you have a six inch line. I'll look at it So a lot of these lines were under six inch. So yes, once they're six inch, you have the potential to add hydrants. As long as the grant funds hold out, we can.
can put that into the design. But yes, so yes, the larger lines will facilitate hiding. Where the
where this project is. Just to add on to that, yeah, and I also understand the frustration, and I don't want to, um, it's not that I don't want to focus on that larger picture. On the federal side, they're coming from what we call hazard mitigation grants. Hazard mitigation grants come from FEMA, and they have to be spent on recovery or rebuild by law. The dollars that are coming from the state have to be spent on recovery and rebuild. Having that discussion, as the gentleman was saying earlier, in regards to additional hookups, that would come from a, another source. And not at all trying to frustrate you with this at all, and I hope, um, just want to be candid, is that the dollars that are allocated for this project have to go for recovery and rebuild by law, both on the federal side as well as on the state side. And the reason why we're looking uh, at the fire zone is because if you are building a single family residence, you trigger the new state code. If you were to build a brand new home on your property that is not manufacturer or class K, you would also have to comply with the sprinkler requirements and flow. Um, and the reason why we're doing this now uh, is because there are so many homes that would otherwise be challenged to be able to get permitted for reoccupancy. And um, you know, this is not something you asked for, and that is why we've been working so hard to make sure that you're not going to have to be on the hook for this rebuild and improvement project. My question is, first thing where you think, you know, this four mile system, is it going to improve the flow of the water? So, okay. Within, within the upgrade, yes. But the, now, what about the issue we have, a bigger issue of drought? How is that going to affect that? And four miles of new pipe with no water That's the same. No, I, I would actually argue that the new improvements on these older lines are going to decrease potential leaks and breakage that would potentially cause large losses of treated water. And so in a drought type scenario, you know, that large loss of water would be much more detrimental. So these areas would be less likely to be uh, influenced in a time of drought by leakage or loss of pressure or unaccounted for loss of water.
how the hell it's going to work, when you think it's going to be coming through, what are specific, any specific questions that you may have. So we invite you to please hang and uh, invite, uh, invite you to be able to have those conversations. In addition, this is going to be a two-year project. So this is going to be the first of several meetings that we're going to be bringing the community together to be able to update you about where we're at. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the county administrator to see if I miss anything that I'd like to turn it over to the Senator Thank you, Senator Mubar. I don't think you missed anything, except I, I also want to say that our planning director, Brian Schultz, is here as well. He will be in the back with Michael Font. So we have Howard Deschill, Michael Font, Brent Schultz, um, and, uh, and uh, Tamara will be here from the water agency. I'll be right out there in the lobby and here to answer any questions that you have. Additionally, if you cannot stay but you have questions, then give us your name and number and we will follow up with you. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here. And in particular, I want to thank our senator and our assemblyman for being here.